at the Bridge of Remembrance, which is a World War I memorial in Christchurch City Center. So as you'll also notice, as we're right next to the Otakoro River, you'll see water plus soil is not always a good mix. So what happened after shaking is the right side of the Bridge of Remembrance actually sank quite a bit further than the left side, just like we saw with the house. So what happened was the engineers needed to raise up the right side, and how they did that was they put piles. So they drilled really long tubes, 26 meters down, and they filled those tubes with concrete. So that all along the base of the Bridge of Remembrance are 26 meter long tubes full of concrete to help to keep the Bridge of Remembrance on top of the land. Also in this, the structural part of it is if you remember the wooden structure that had the rocking frame, this is very similar. So this one has around each one of the arches post-tensioning, just like those elastic bands going in each one of the columns and beams. So the rectangular post-tensioning and each one of the arches allows the building to rock this direction and then we'll pull it back after the shaking just like we saw in that wooden building. Right above me, and you'll see one of the arches, is a straight line that goes in the middle of the arch. In the middle of that is a metal plate that actually separates the two pieces of the arch and in the event of shaking allows each one of them to rub on each other independently in allowing that rocking motion to go freely. So as you see, the Bridge of Remembrance has a couple of the different technologies that we saw earlier today. So in the liquefaction, we have piles holding the Bridge of Remembrance up so that in future shaking, it won't sink in different directions. We also have, like we saw on the rocking frame, the ability to move back and forth with the post-tensioning, those elastic steel tendons to pull the building back into place. But we also have the steel plate in the middle of each arch to allow each piece to move independently. The one last feature that you may not have noticed is after the 2010-2011 earthquakes, they added in a seismic gap. So very similar to what we saw with the Beatrice Tinsley building, allowing the building to move freely without hitting the surrounding objects, we also have a very similar one here. So this was put in afterwards that if the building rocks, it's not going to destroy the stone fence around it.